from Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting new plans to retake Ramadi. U.S. President Barack Obama has reaffirmed the strong U.S. support for Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi and for a new offensive by paramilitary forces to recapture the Iraqi city of Ramadi from Islamic State insurgents. The president's declaration came during a meeting Tuesday with top security advisors. A U.S. military spokesman says retaking Ramadi will be difficult because fleeing Iraqi forces left a lot of American military equipment in the hands of the Islamic State. A court in Kabul has sentenced 11 police officers, including a district police chief, to one-year jail terms over the mob beating of a woman earlier this year. Eight others were set free. The judge found that the 11 guilty officers had neglected their duty to protect 27-year-old Farkunda from the March 19th attack. The attack was sparked by false accusations that she had desecrated the Koran. The U.S. Department of Justice has charged six Chinese nationals with economic espionage and theft of trade secrets for allegedly accessing secret U.S. technologies and sharing them with universities and companies controlled by the Chinese government. Unsealing an indictment filed last month, U.S. officials in Washington announced the charges Tuesday. Thousands of Burundians have defied authorities and have marked a march through the capital, Bujumbura, demanding that President Pierre N. Kurunziza step down. Police fired tear gas and beat protesters who say they will remain in the streets until the president withdraws his plan to seek a third term in office. At least 20 people have died in three weeks of protests. This is VOA News. Police in the U.S. state of Texas say they are bracing for more motorcycle gang violence in the wake of a deadly shootout between rival bikers that left nine people dead two days ago. Waco, Texas police spokesman Patrick Swanton said the gangs are engaged in a turf war for supremacy in the state. The U.S. State Department has proposed releasing private emails from U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton in early 2016. The State Department made the proposal late Monday in response to a lawsuit filed under the Freedom of Information Act. Clinton's emails became the subject of controversy earlier this year when it was revealed that during her term as Secretary of State, she conducted much of her communications over a private email account. South Sudanese rebels have reportedly captured the site of an oil refinery near the country's main oil fields. Hillary Hewler has more. A spokesman for rebels loyal to South Sudan's former vice president, Riek Machar, say rebel forces have captured an oil refinery in Upper Nile State. The refinery is near one of the country's largest working oil fields, Paloch. James Dock said in a statement they had done so in order to deprive the government of oil revenues used to fight the country's ongoing civil war. UN Mission to South Sudan spokesperson Ariane Contier says she was aware of Doc's claims but could not confirm them. Hillary Hewler, Nairobi. Australia is ruling out leniency for returning jihadis following reports that at least three of its citizens fighting with Islamic State militants in Syria want to return home. Phil Mercer takes a look. Mr. Abbott says homesick jihadis won't be shown any leniency. If you go abroad to kill innocent people, uh, in the name of uh, misguided fundamentalism and extremism. If you go abroad to become an Islamist killer, well, we're hardly going to welcome you back into this country because the Australian people expect their country to be safe and someone who has been a terrorist abroad could very easily become a terrorist here in Australia. It's estimated that more than 100 Australians have joined radical Islamic groups in Iraq and Syria. Phil Mercer for VOA News, Sydney. The Ukrainian government lodged an official note of protest with Russia Tuesday over two Russian servicemen it says its forces captured in eastern Ukraine. A Ukrainian foreign ministry official told reporters the presence of Russian soldiers inside Ukraine raised doubts about Russia's commitment to the ceasefire agreement reached between Ukraine's government and Russia-backed separatists in February. The two men were captured on Saturday and are recovering from wounds in a Kiev hospital. From the VOA News Center in Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from VOA.